Hi. Today we're going to be continuing our box trend. Recently, I've been on a box kick. Box kick. Box kick. Box kick. Box 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 kick 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 kick. I'll be showing you how I made these equilateral triangle walnut boxes. Let's go. Oh yeah, and I have a really cool trick up my sleeve you're not going to want to miss. There's nothing up my sleeve. Okay, now we start this project out by milling some S2S walnut. The S2S stands for surfaced on two sides, which is perfect if you don't have a joiner. Once you're finished with jointing, you have two sides surfaced. So now we can just skip straight ahead to cutting a parallel side on our table saw and face jointing on our planer. And here I messed up my order of operations. I should have ran the long piece through the planer first instead of cutting them down. Either way, it worked out the same. I just glued them to a sacrificial piece and ran it all through the planer at once. Okay, I wanted to go more in depth on how I'm going to cut these angles. So as you can see with the equilateral triangle, you have 60 degree corners right here. 60 here, here, and here. Now when you miter them, you're taking that and you're halving it. So the miter cut that I need per piece is a 30 degree angle here. So I'll have six of those cuts. Now the issue is, my table saw doesn't extend that far down. So let's go over here and let's imagine that this is my table saw blade. So at its normal cutting, it's straight up and down. So here would be the bed of the table saw and the blade is sticking straight up. And you can adjust your table saw blade at different angles like this. Now the issue is that mine only extends to 45 degrees and most only extend to about 45 degrees. So I need to go all the way down to 30 degrees to be able to cut that angle. So as you see here, here is my piece of wood. And to make that cut, I need to angle, here's my blade. I need to angle my blade all the way down past 45 to 30 degrees to make that cut which leaves me 60 degrees on the other end. So I can't do that, so here's a workaround. You take your piece, you stand it vertically, and then you angle your blade to 60 degrees. So back to over here, I have this all the way down to 45, so I can back it up, and now this is 55, and here's 60. So I can angle my blade at 60 degrees, and that will make a 30 degree cut, but I have to run my piece vertically. So I need something to support it while I run it through the saw. Now I connect all my pieces with tape to 
make sure that the joints are fitting correctly and snug. And then I run them through the router table to create a groove for the bottom. At this point I cut my pieces in half because I plan on making two equilateral triangle boxes. And now it's time to work on the base. I start by resawing a piece of walnut into two. Then I mill it down to the proper thickness. After tracing the outline of each box onto the bottom piece, I take it to the miter saw to cut it down. Okay, and here is where this build gets pretty interesting. So we have everything cut out and they're ready to be glued together. But because of all these sharp angles, it's gonna be really hard to clamp this together. Now, I have this bandy clamp, but as you can see, they're 90 degrees and it forms a square. So I think I have a pretty good workaround that I'm gonna try out and possibly replace these with something that work for my triangle box. I separated one of the pieces from the bandy clamp and took measurements. I then replicated the model in Fusion 360, except for I changed the angle of it from 90 to 60 degrees. Now this is where Fusion really shines. Because I designed it correctly and used user parameters, I can go in now and adjust the angle to whatever angle I wish in the future and within a click I have a file that's ready to be 3D printed and used. So if I want to make a hexagon box I can just adjust the angle for that. If I break one of the pieces and need to remake one of the 90 degree pieces for your typical square I can do that. From here, it was just a matter of slicing and sending off the files to be printed on my resin 3D printer.
And now it's glue up time. I first masked off the areas that I knew would be really hard to reach the glue squeeze out. I spread a little glue with my fingies. And then it was time to see if my contraption even worked. And I must say, I think it did pretty good. My joints came out very clean. In fact, I'm not exactly sure how I would have clamped this together without it. And with the bases all finished, it was time to make a top. So I traced out all my pieces, cut them oversized so I can glue them to the base and trim them up on my router table. I like to make grooves on my top so I can recess the lid into the box. So here I'm making the measurement for the groove so I can go over to the router table and route it out. For this project, I decided to use a roundover bit instead of a chamfer to ease all my edges.
I think these triangle boxes turn out pretty cool. Uh, I was debating whether I should add a little lift off handle to the lid. If you have any suggestions, just go ahead and type it out in the comments and I might add one later. If you missed my first box build, I'll put a link over here to the pill box I designed like two weeks ago. Either way, thank you so much for watching and enjoy your day.